Aguas Claras is a barrio known for its unhealthy living conditions, such as violence, unclean water, and overall isolation from the rest of the city. About 2,000 people live in this poverty-stricken neighborhood, and one of those people is my birth mother. On July 1st, I decided to travel to Colombia to find my birth mom, who I haven't seen in 17 years. When I arrived to the barrio, I noticed construction workers working on the roads and the houses, and people were working really hard to improve their overall way of life. The interactions with the community and the kids with uncertain future led me to go back four months later because I wanted to see how I can help to give back to the community where I was born. My story began on July 13th, 1996 in Bogota, Colombia. I lived with my sister, my mom, and my dad in a small town called Aguas Claras, and it was very isolated from the rest of the city. My sister was the one that pretty much took care of me, and one of my first memories there was exploring the mountain and playing with the kids in the street. Unfortunately, when I was four years old, a traumatic event happened where I was separated from my parents and my sister. I was told that I would never be back to Aguas Claras because it was no longer safe for me. I was told that the orphanage was my new home and they told my sister and I that we only had 30 days to see each other. And then after that, we didn't know if we would ever see each other again. At first I hated the orphanage. There was countless times where I would try to run away but eventually I fell in love with it. I had friends, I had people that took care of me, and it was really a place for me to be a kid. I was one of the oldest kids in the orphanage and I would always see my friends getting adopted. And I thought this would always be the rest of my life, but that wasn't the case when a couple from Manaway, Ohio adopted me. Man, my whole life completely changed. Even though I was really sad to leave my own country, I was really excited to meet new people and to be part of a family again. I was the only child, and of course it had its perks, but it got lonely sometimes, and those times I would think about my sister. I would always ask my parents about my sister, but honestly, they didn't know where to start, and when I turned 16, they found Gustavo an incredible man that brings separated families together. One day, he called us back and told me that he found my sister on Facebook. He gave me her contact information and we started Skyping. Shortly after that, I flew to Colombia to reunite with my sister. I was really happy to be back in my home country and to start to understand where I came from. I was able to visit the orphanage and I met new family that I never knew I had. I asked my sister about my birth mother, what she's like then and what she's like now. I was able to collect some old images of my birth mother and it made me want to know her better. From my sister, I found out that my parents were still living in Bogota. I felt at peace to find out that they were okay. So out of nowhere, I get a call from my cousin Andrea and she told me that she's with my birth mom and she asked me if I wanted to talk to her. I said yes because I didn't know I would have another opportunity to talk to her. Shortly after we hang up, my cousin sends me a video of my mother. Andres, estoy acá, acá donde Sandra. Ya hemos almorzado y estoy muy bien de que estés. Voy a tratar de cada día estar mejor, de luchar por estar bien. Así. Te mando un beso bien, bien grande y que te cuides. Te espero en junio. So, the summer of 2019, I decided to fly to Colombia to reunite with my birth mom and to learn more information on where I came from. So, right when I arrived to Colombia, I immediately got a taxi and drove straight to Aguas Claras. So I'm arriving to Aguas Claras. My taxi man Gracias, just stops. 
They told me that the streets were too steep for the car and I had to walk. And I had to walk about a mile up the hill to get to the entrance of Aguas Claras. As I was walking up the street, I noticed the houses changed from apartment complexes to self-made homes. And the more I walked, the more alone I felt. But this didn't stop me. I was hoping with the address and the description of the house that my sister gave me would help me find my mother easier. While I was walking up the hill, I thought about what I would say to her or how I would meet her. My heart was pounding and I knew I was getting closer to the house. And when I finally made that last turn, I looked down the street and I instantly recognized the clay house. For a split second, I thought about turning back, but I was like, no. Nah. I walked up to it and knock. Knock one more time, nothing. I was pretty discouraged that she wasn't there, and in a way, I felt lost and abandoned. And I didn't know what to do, so I started walking around, and in the distance, I could hear music. When I turned the corner, I saw people painting on the ground, and that instantly drew my attention. I thought this was the coolest thing ever because it was the first time I ever saw art in Aguas Claras. In the distance, I could notice construction workers working on the roads and people dressed in blue walking around. I found out that they were part of an organization called Bogota Mejor para los Todos. This government-funded program provides communities with different resources such as water, housing, clothing, and food. In this situation, Bogota para los Todos donated 20 to 30 paint cans to the residents of Aguas Claras. You can ask to her the question that you have because she is part of the community. She sí. has all the history. Amor. Cesar Alfonso Gil Wilches is my name. I am a vendedor ambulante for 50 years. I have been here in the street. I have had cars to sell fruit. Eh, vender helados, todas esas cositas he trabajado en la calle como vendedor ambulante. Pues niños, niños no, ya jóvenes. Sí. Ya jóvenes entre los 18 y 25, 30 años eh, le jalan mucho al a la droga. Ah, sí. La marihuana, el bazuco. Ese es el problema de este barrio, pero no es tanto como antes. Y ahorita es por ahí el 10%. Esa mujer le puede, puede preguntarle a la, a la señora del barrio, a la junta, la sí. señora Lidia. Sí, ya le dimos el Lidia. número, Lidia Garzón. Y ella la señora a conectar. Mi nombre es Lidia Garzón, Lidia Elvira Garzón Barrera, y mi título o cargo es presidenta de la Junta de Acción Comunal, presidenta del barrio. Claro que sí. Aguas Claras, yo llevo acá en el, llegué acá hace 26 años. Era un barrio muy, des, digamos, muy despoblado. No habían casas, muy poquitas. Eh, era más monte. Teníamos que preservar la naturaleza. Este barrio está en un problema de conservación por la montaña. Teníamos que preservar la naturaleza y supuestamente esto le da oxígeno a la ciudad, aire, no sé cómo dirán allá. Entonces esto es el pulmón de la ciudad para que el aire de la ciudad no sea contaminado. Por eso se tienen que conservar los cerros o las montañas. Por lo que ya tenemos un barrio bastante constituido, ya tiene servicios públicos, agua, alcantarillado eh, y arreglo de vías y un mejor transporte. As I was walking around, I could see what Lydia was talking about. I was still in search for my mom, but down the hill, I noticed these three kids using pieces of plywood to slide down the main street as if they were skateboarding. I couldn't tell you how many times they ran up to go back down on those pieces of plywood. 
I saw them having so much fun and I didn't know such a simple board could bring so much joy to these kids, especially living in these situations that they do. Poca gente porque no tenemos una pista, no hay como un parque o un skate park que lo que lo motive a uno a hacer eso. Ah, no hay un no hay, skate, no hay un skate park cercano para hacer ese deporte. Ah, okay. ¿Te conoces la calle? Solo la calle. Son street sí. Porque no hay patinadores aquí, pues porque no sé, la gente no se motiva. No hay nada que los motive a, a montarse en la. No, ellos no tienen esa oportunidad de patinar. Exacto, no ah, tienen la oportunidad. Okay. Muchos no tienen los recursos para comprar un skate. And that made me think about the community that was restoring its own barrio. I was really discouraged. I wasn't able to find my mom. But these, all these elements gave me the incentive to come back to Colombia, to my barrio, to do something about the situation. We're gonna go to one of the skate shops that's close to here. And we're just gonna get the parts. Awesome, got the first one. That's the first one? The first donation, man. Oh, no way. So you're, you're killing it. Nice. Just kicking it off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Santiago, and I just collect uh, these two words, and I want to, to give you this because uh, last night you told me about your project and I really like it. So I want to, I just want to help you, you know? My goal was to have complete skateboards because I wanted these kids to be able to get on the board right away. And it is also hard for these kids to get skateboard supplies when there's no skateboard shops around their community uh, and also they don't have the funding for it. The Push Forward project is really important to me because it gives these kids a positive outlet to their everyday life and not go into the wrong path. Four months later, I flew back to Colombia because I was really inspired by my community's desire to get better. I wanted to give back to my community in my own way, and that's why I created the Push Forward Project. My goal here in Colombia is to help my mother in any way I can. Um, just by trying to make up time for what we lost for so many years and just trying to like regain that relationship. I was really excited to come back to Colombia and to hopefully see her, but when I got there, she wasn't there. Fortunately enough, my sister made an arrangement at her place for me to meet my mom. Today is a fucking big ass day. In, in about 15 minutes, I'm gonna meet my birth mom for the first time in 17 years. It's just, it's just a lot, to be honest with you. Those 15 minutes felt like hours to me, and I would always check the door to see if she was coming. I was starting to have doubts that she would even come, but all of a sudden, I hear the door open. Words can't describe how I felt, but being with my sister and my birth mother 
was one step closer to us being a family again. I told my mom that I would be in Aguas Claras almost every day if she promised that she would be there. I went back to Aguas Claras and I thought to myself, what are the odds of her not being there again? And I knocked on the door and I heard her coming down from upstairs. ¿Qué es tu nombre? Mi nombre es Luz Marina Celis González. Yo siempre he vivido esta casa, he vivido en esta casa con Andrés, con mi hija y con Juan David. Siempre yo he vivido acá y pues yo soy muy feliz acá. Sí. Sí. Yo soy feliz y la voy a cada día que pase la voy a arreglar muy bonito. Este barrio Siempre ha, sido, ha estado en construcción. Aguas Claras es un barrio muy bonito. Tiene muchos árboles y mucho oxígeno. Eh, tiene mucha tranquilidad y, y es un barrio muy bello. Sí. Y she's helping me film right now. And yeah, look at her. Yeah. There's my mom filming. And then she started introducing me to everybody we passed, and I could really sense her proudness. It was really interesting. Some of the people recognized me from when I was a little boy. I could tell that a lot was going through her mind, and that she was really happy to see me. And she was excited to show me around the house that I was born in. So sometimes she sleeps here, and this is the TV that she watches with other stuff. Venga, vamos, sí. Uh, to come back to the house that I used to live in um, and just seeing her living situation, but uh, she's like really content of being here but I, I want to help and uh, I just want to help her living situation. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff and there's a lot of random stuff in this place. Um, just a lot of used stuff. Tengo dos animales, perros, Pepa y Maduro. Eh, son muy ah. inquietos, comen mucho y cuidan la casa. Esta es mi pieza, mi pieza. Sí. Y ahí veo televisión y descanso. Vea, hago comida ya, ya. Acá. Makes her food. Yo invento así. To see, you know, the woman that birthed me to this house. This crazy dog, and you know, living situation, it just crushes my heart. Que este. Todo lo que tengo que hacer. Delicada. Profesion. Profesion. So I decided to follow my mom to her work, and I found out that she collects recycling. Sino que yo no, yo no se la quería entregar, no sé por qué. La bonita, es para rezar. Sí, me gusta. Sí, le gustó. When she gave me that necklace, I felt a sense of reconnection, and I was able to reestablish a good relationship with my birth mom. No sé por qué mi hijo es el que decide. Yo no puedo ahí hablar nada de eso, porque el que decide es Andrés. Sí. Yo quisiera estar con mi hijo, pero mi hijo es el que decide.
I really wanted to help her in my own way, and I thought maybe painting the house would be a perfect opportunity to do that. Ahora, los proyectos que hay con ellos, ¿cuáles son? Entonces, eh, esa vez nos dieron la pintura porque teníamos que mostrar que era una, éramos una comunidad muy unida. Tufa, me voy a poner a pintar. Bye. Uh -huh. 